Number nine, write out the full electron configuration for each of the following atoms and for the monatomic ion found in binary ionic compounds containing the element. And then we have uh, six elements, A through F. So let me, actually, I won't write A through F like I usually do because I don't know if I'm going to need more space or not. But looks like we have to write two electron configurations. We have to write the electron configuration for the atom. And whenever they state atom, that means the neutral um, element, right? So atoms are always neutral as opposed to ions, which are the charged atom per se. So those are going to have either a positive charge. So I'll put that over here. Whether they lost electrons, which is positive. So if you're always a positive charge, that means you always lost electrons. Or you could be a negative, which means that you gain electrons. All right. Now, how are we going to figure out whether these elements are positive or negative? That's your trend that you should know as far as oxidation states. So oxidation state is just a fancy way of saying charge in the upper right hand corner, whether you lost electrons or whether you gained electrons. So there's only a trend for the main group elements, which are group one and two, and then 13 all the way to 18, which is as follows. Group one is a plus one. So any element in here, when it forms a ionic compound, chances are like 99% of the time, it will be a plus one charge. Group two would be a plus two. Group 13 would be a plus three. Group 13 would be a plus four. And then you start dealing with negatives. So then you would go negative three, negative two, negative one, and zero. And turns out that group 14, since it's in the middle of both positive and negative three, group um, four could be a plus four, or it could also be a minus four. It just depends whether it's a metal or a non-metal. So we have to write the full electron configuration. So no shorthand here, unfortunately, and we have to write it for both. Now, before we do that, just remember that the elements that are grouped in the S, um, sorry, the elements that are grouped in the yellow is part of your S subshell element, um, electrons. The, the green over here is the P electrons. The blue is the D. And then if we need to go down here, this is where your F electrons are. And remember that the S's start with 1S, the P's start with 2P, the D's start with 3D, and the F's start with 4F. Okay, so let's get started. Let's do A. And now they want us to just do the full electron configuration for the atom first, and then we will do it for the ion, whether it's a positive or a negative. So aluminum is over here and they want the full electron configuration. So I have to start from the beginning. Now we've done electron configurations in the past two questions and in basically one third of chapter three. So if you guys are having a hard time, go back to chapter three, that's totally fine. Electron configuration is a little hard for some students, but there are tons of questions in chapter three. If you guys want to get more practice, I'll be there for you guys. And I go at a much slower pace because that's what we're learning in that chapter. Here we're going to kind of do like a quick version because I'm assuming that you guys know how to do electronic configuration. So let's go. So we start with 1s. We have to start with hydrogen. And remember, you got to start with 1 and always follow the atomic numbers to get to the number that you want. In this case, it's 13. So you would say 1s. You pass both boxes. Remember, helium should be part of the s's and not the p's. So technically, you should cancel that out and put it over here if you're doing electron configuration. So it'd be 1s2. We drop down over here. This is the, two P, uh, the 2s. So this would be 2s2 because we got to pass both boxes. Now we're over here in 2p. I pass all six boxes. So that's 2p6. Now I'm down to 3s. I pass both of those boxes. So 3s2. And now I'm at 3p and it's the first box. So that's 3p1. Now we have to do the same thing for the, um, for the ion. And in this case, aluminum is in group 13 and it's a plus three. So aluminum should be a plus three. 
So what you do for um, your ions, and I'll write this down here. If you ever want to find an electron configuration, an EC for an ion, you will always basically do what I just did. You will write electron configuration for the atom, pretending that the charge isn't even there, and then you will adjust for the charge. So, if I can, what you guys should do is literally just copy and paste. Well, you can't really copy and paste, but I can. But you should literally write the same exact thing that you did before. So now you're at here. Now you worry about the charge. And the plus three tells you that you lost three electrons. And you always lose it from the largest number, the largest principal quantum number. So between the one, two, two, and threes, you will lose the electrons from the threes. And in this case, you need to lose three electrons, and you always lose it from what you last stated going reverse, so going from right to left, technically. So there's one electron here that you can get rid of. So that gets rid of this whole subshell. And now you need a total of three, so you're looking for two more. And here they are. So you would get rid of those two, which cancels out this whole thing. So that would be the charged electron configuration. So you would lose the 3p, one electron, and you would lose the two electrons in the 3s. And that would be the answer for A. Box that off. That's that. Next one, B. Bromine. Okay, so we need to do it for the atom, so no charge. Bromine is all the way over here. So we've got to start from the beginning. That's 1s, and actually, let me just keep that circled. So we have 1s2. We're now in the 2s, so 2s2. We're now in the 2p. We cross all those boxes, so 2p6. Now we're in this area, so that's the 3s, and that's 3s2. Now I'm in 3p, so I go all the way over. I cross all of those boxes, so that's 3p6. Now I'm down to 4s, so 4s2, 3d10, because I have to, you know, go, go over all those. And now I'm finally in 4p. I have to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 boxes. So this would be uh, 4d, uh, sorry, 4p5. Okay. Now let's do the same thing for, oops, I don't want to give you the answer, right? Let's do the same thing for the ion, but how do we know what charge it is? It's in group 17, that's the halogens. Halogens are, majority of the time, always going to be a negative one. So that's why I put a negative one there. It's kind of like instinct. So remember, for your ions, what you should do is you should write the complete electron configuration, which I'm just going to copy and paste but you guys can just rewrite it again. And now you do your manipulation. So now it's a minus one, which means that you gained one electron. And remember, an S subshell always can have a max of two electrons. A P subshell can always have a max of six electrons. The Ds can always have a max of 10 electrons. And the Fs can have a max of 14 electrons. So if you're gaining electrons, generally you're going to gain it to the last thing that you wrote. And over here, the last thing was 4p5. Well, the p's can have a max of six and I need to gain one. So technically this five could just turn into a six, right? Five plus one is six. So if I can just erase that and just leave it as 4p5, six, that would be the answer for B. So you see the difference here. All we're doing is we're just adding one electron to the 4P subshell, and that's that answer. C. Um, we got SR. So strontium's over here. We gotta start from the beginning because it's full electron configuration. So that's 1S2, 2S2, 2p6, right? Now we're at this level. That's 3s2. Then we're over here, 3p6. So 3p6. Drop down to the 4s. So that's 4s2. I got to pass both boxes. 3d10. 
I'm in 4P now. I pass all six of those, so that's 4P6. And finally, I'm at 5S, so that's 5S2, because I have to pass both boxes, so 5S2. Now, we got to figure out the charge. So for strontium, it's in group two, so that's a plus two charge. So I'm going to say that this one is now strontium plus two. And whenever you're finding out what the electron configuration for ions is, you always take what it was before without the charge. So that's this. And I'm just going to copy that over. Saves a lot of time, right? And now I need to go by the charge. It's a plus two, which means that you should lose two electrons. And you always lose from the largest quantum number, principal quantum number. So if I look at the end here, I got threes, I got fours, and then I have a five. Which one do you think we'll lose from? We'll lose from the five. And I need to lose two electrons. Here's the two electrons. So if those, all of those go, the whole 5S subshell goes. So I can just erase all of this and voila, I lost the two electrons. That's the electron configuration for uh, strontium plus two. Okay, lithium, Li. Now I'm gonna start over here. So D, Li, the atom by itself is over here. It's only number three. So we go 1s2 and then I drop down here. 2s1, because I only need the one box. And now I'm going to figure out what the charge was. Lithium is in group one, so that should be a plus one charge. So I will write down what it was before. So this one is easy, so I'll just rewrite it. 1s2, 2s1. And now plus one means that I lost one electron. That's not a two, that's a one. It should be the same exact thing that I wrote before, right? And between one and two, you always lose from the higher number. And here's the one electron. So if that whole thing goes, the whole 2S subshell goes. So I can just erase this. And that would be my answer. It would basically be the same electron configuration as helium. Next, arsenic, AS. Let's do the atom first. AS is over here. So I got to start from the beginning. That's 1s, and it's 1s2. Then we drop down to 2s2. We're now in the 2p land. I got to go past all those six boxes, so 2p6. Now we're in 3s. We pass both boxes, so 3s2. 3p6, because I have to pass all six boxes. Um, 4s2, because I have to pass those two boxes. 3d10, because I have to pass all of this. Remember, I still want to get over here. So 3D10, and then finally 4S123. Okay. Now, I'm just going to erase this. We know that this is the S's, right? So now, what's the charge of arsenic when it wants to bind and become a compound, an ionic compound? Well, it's in group 15. That's a negative 3. So arsenic would have a negative 3 charge. And remember, you write exactly what it was before. So I'm just going to rewrite it. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and then 4s3. And now a negative 3 means that I gain 3 electrons. And remember, the p's can have a max of 6. So this three would be plus three, because you're gaining three. So three plus three is six, and then you would fill out the max. Oh, sorry, this should be a four, yeah, this should be a four P. So then it would be four P six. Last but not least, I guess I can do this one over here, F. So we got sulfur. Sulfur is over here. So first the atom, got to start from the beginning. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, we now drop down to here, that's 3s2. And now I'm over here, 3p4, right? Now let's do the ion. 
So S, actually, what would be the charge for sulfur when it makes an ionic compound? It's in the calcogen group. That's the oxygen group. That's group 16. That's a negative 2. So now I just rewrite what I wrote, right? 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P4. And now it's a negative 2, which means that I need to gain two electrons. And the P's have a max of 6. And look what happens. 3P4 plus 2 is a 6. So I can just turn this into 3P6, and the 3P subshell will be maxed out. It would be just like a noble gas, and we are done. Whew. So number 9 is done. What do you guys think? If I did go a little bit too fast for you, you could always go back to Chapter 3 to kind of, you know, pick up the pace with knowing how to write electron configurations. You can always leave me a comment in the below. I'll answer anybody. So, um, yeah, love talking to you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Let me know if it did. Click that subscribe button if you will. That would help out the channel a lot. Thank you for the support. I'll see you guys in the next question. Have an awesome day.